this week's tale of mayhem in Mishigash, the Kabul boys meet an unneighbor with unconventional desires. Will our hero's house call turn up the cure to this mystery? Or will they be borrowing a cup of abomination? Find out on this week's episode of Chapo Trap House. Semper Games. The following is canon. (laughs) For those of you who don't know, I'm Virgil Texas and we are Chapo Trap House. (laughs) Most of the time, we are your everyday run-of-the-mill arts and entertainment podcast. But once in a blue moon, we delve into the occult indulging in a session of the tabletop role-playing game Call of Cthulhu, based on the works of H.P. Lovecraft. And, like H.P. Lovecraft, Matt, Will, and Felix here role-play as 1920s investigators who are incurably racist neurotics. (laughs) Over the course of their adventures, they matched wits with the immortal hermeticist Johann Podesta at the summoning of the Pizza Gate. They foiled the mad monk Rasputin and his eldritch allies infiltrating American elections. And they scuttled industrialist Enoch Musk's rocket in Musk's of Nyarlathotep. Tonight's scenario is a prequel to the events of Tabletop Game Theory, episodes one through six. And I did not write this scenario. Mr. Corbett was authored by Michael DeWolf and published in 1990 by Chaosium in the excellent collection Mansions of Madness. I have merely made a handful of alterations to the scenario to reflect the ethos of our program. It must be stated that absolutely, positively nothing in this scenario is based on real events or real people. With that in mind, let's play Mr. Jeffstein. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chris, can I get some uh, talking music? It is November 9th, 1924. Calvin Coolidge has just won election to a full term as president, beating centrist Democrat John W. Davis. For just a few months now, the three of you have been hosting a radio show. Originally started as a lark by three pals who met on the telegram, Capone's speakeasy has found a loyal following among disaffected members of the lost generation who are sick of being smeared as misogynists for their support of fighting Bob LaFollette. And now would be a good time to introduce your characters and describe your day jobs. I am uh, Professor William Hackenbush, a, uh, a, a latinum besotted failed academic who, uh, of course, attended Miskatonic University, in where I uh, studied the uh, esoteric science of phrenology and many other uh, sort of lost mystical occult sciences. Uh, couldn't get a job after I graduated, so I uh, am still working at a book depository. As the show begins to take off, we have just begun our nickel a month subscription advertised in the back of Collier's Magazine. But unfortunately, I am still living in a shack in Red Hook, Brooklyn, where I commute to work in Midtown Manhattan at the Book Depository by Zeppelin every single day. I am uh, Lieutenant Colonel Felix Gumtree. Uh, At the time of this scenario, I am in active duty as a liar in the U.S. military. I have a, like, below average to average IQ, but I'll just, like, just say anything to get out of anything. And uh, I invented white rap. Can you, can you explain your, your, your this outfit? This is all historically accurate. I, all invent, I invented everything I'm wearing right now. You may think it, this IDF t-shirt, this Patriots flat brim, these gym shorts. You may think they didn't exist in 1924, and that's why you're in the fucking audience and I'm playing. 
<laughs> I invented these when I fought in the Great War as the only samurai, as a member of the U.S. Expeditionary Forces. I thought, what, what would make me more aerodynamic? While also showing support for what I would hope would be a great team many years after my death in the future. America's team, Brady, baby. Let's do this. Uh, I am Dr. Matthew Penny Farthing. Uh, I, I actually do not live currently uh, in uh, Red Hook. I uh, still live in Kansas, where I am a goat testicle specialist at Dr. John Brinkley's facility. Uh, and I communicate to the show via radiola and by telegraph. Uh, I got uh, an early episode, became notorious for uh, a telegram where I sent saying, shut up, stop, shut up, stop, shut up, stop, shut the fuck up, stop. I'm sorry, I'll be quiet, stop. Uh, but other than that, this is basically a hobby because I am a well remunerated surgeon and very well respected in my community, and there is absolutely zero chance that I'm going to get torqued on ether and replace some farmer's testicles with bocce balls. <laughs> that will never happen. Uh, one last detail here, if you'll just uh, allow me one second. Just getting character here. Uh, you may have noticed uh, that I brought a friend on stage here tonight. This is uh, a tribute to uh, author H.P. Lovecraft's famous cat. Do not ask me the name of the cat. We will not be discussing the name of the cat. But just know that uh, he, he joins us here tonight. And although none of you have interacted with the mythos before, you do have some uh, uh, phobias and manias. Oh, um, I mean, like, largely... Uh, my entire career as a phrenologist and a cult expert is driven by a deep-seated psycho psychosexual obsession with my sister and um, uh, also my fear of modernist art. Yeah, for me, like many people have alleged that I'm addicted to drugs, but they in themselves are in fact real drug addicts and not me. Uh, like every red-blooded uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant male, uh, I am addicted to ether and women's shoes. Very good. It is an unusually hot November in Brooklyn, the tail end of an Indian summer. You've just finished an interview with young Dorothy Parker for her New Yorker piece, What Will Become of the Ethnic Left. You decide to beat the autumn heat by taking in a film, the latest installment of your favorite action movie franchise, Man Washing a Horse 7, Infinity Horses. Part of the Cats and Jammer Kids extended cinematic universe. Let's see it. for the post-credit sequence.
Thank you to director C.M. Wade. I, I fucking hate those movies so much, man. Like, you see, like, the agenda in there. Like, the only, the only guy warning about the horse catastrophe was Irish. I wonder who's fucking pushing that agenda. There honestly hasn't been a good movie since 1919, The Gay Picnic. That was the last one. <laughs> I I fucking hate the Cats and Jammer Kids extended cinematic universe. I like they, all these Nickelodeons they keep putting out every single week. Just more slop to be lapped up. And like I, you know, we're the only radio show that will tell you that it sucks. True artists like Buster Keaton and Fatty Arbuckle, Sherlock <laughs> Jr. go unnoticed, or you know, uh, oh this is bad. This is problematic. What you know, Buster Keaton did with that ladder. <laughs> You. And you know, like, if you want to, if you want, if you want, if you want people to tell you how good, uh, you know, Washing Horses number seven is, you should tune into like, I guess, like the bigger radio shows, like the Cuckoo Hour or the Champion Spark Plug Hour. Yeah. If I, you, you want to hear those fucking Jonathan's lie to you, go for it. <laughs> you guys are a bunch of snobs. This is great popular entertainment. You guys only like movies if it involves Frenchmen trying to murder the moon. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's why we go to the movies, is, like, it's spectacle. Um, you know, if I was to invent film theory now, in 1924, I would include that. <clears throat> Unfortunately, though, I just feel like I, I still go to see all of them, because, you know, the clip at the end of the cats fighting each other, I want to yeah, see how that plays yeah. out. <laughs> It is early evening now, and you have to record an episode. You assemble at Professor Hackenbush's cat-filled home. You set up your recording equipment. Let's hear it. Okay. Uh, Cal I guess Calvin Coolidge is the president. We yeah. warned you it would happen. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, welcome to Perdition Earth. <laughs> We warned you it would happen, and all we were called was a bunch of La Follette lads, but what the fuck? I mean, this is, this is it. It's, it's cool. It's cool. It's, we're living the Coolidge world now. Yeah, we've all got Coolidge brain. We're all just tall as shit, not saying anything. Fuck. Like, all this entire election, all you told us La Follette supporters was like, oh, you're acting Portuguese. The fucking world is Portuguese now. Hope you're fucking happy. Uh, okay, I guess it's time for uh, this week's uh, reading series. I will be um, uh, going into uh, the uh, Collier's Magazine, uh, Things You Can Do With Flour article. <laughs> Counting down the top 12 <laughs> things you can do with flour. Ugh, more of this bullshit. Oh my God. I fucking hate reading this, dude. I hate... Waking up every day, like, one, oh, what is the elite media going to tell me what kind of cake I can bake? I fucking hate this, man. It sucks. Like, I may be, look, I may be, like, tempting fate here, but sometimes I just wish that, like, an eternal evil, like, we have to fight an eternal evil and maybe, like, two-thirds of us go insane fighting it. Instead of reading another fucking bullshit article from Collier's. It is good to have um, uh, Dr. Penny Farthing in person, so you know I don't have to, to read over the uh, the ticker tape um, his interjections yeah. about the things to do with flour. Yeah, I can't wait to hear be able to react right now to the absurd and idiotic things that you're supposed to do with flour. The fuck? I mean, forget this flour shit. Yeah, fuck this. Uh, Davis, how? Did, I mean, come on. How did that guy lose? Yeah. Um, uh, just presidential yeah. candidate Jim Davis. What the fuck yeah. was he doing? Yeah. I, I may not be John W. Davis, but I lost the election. <laughs> that's, what, that's the voice that he has, the Democratic Party voice. The guy spent his entire campaign drawing comically fat cats instead of actually trying to connect to the American electorate. Felix, as Dr. Uh, Penny Farthing goes off on one of his classic rants, uh, you idly look out the window and see Will's neighbor park his automobile in front of his house across the street. He exits the car and pops open the trunk, taking out two canvas-wrapped objects. One is small and round, the other approximately the size of a baseball bat. Carrying these to the front door, he holds them both under one arm as he struggles with the lock. It's, it's very funny watching a man fail, and that's why you watch this. I would like to put these in some sort of failure compilation one day. 
The larger package slides loose and falls to the front porch. The canvas folds fall open and you catch a glimpse of something white and cylindrical. We have a kinetic situation outdoors, gentlemen. <laughs> there is a man very uh, crowdishly meandering around the driveway perimeter, visually ascertaining uh, an obfuscation of the kinetic per- parameter, and we are at zero target, 3,800 hours. Wait, wait a second. Uh, wait. Is, is, is this asshole neighbor trying to smuggle in an ionic or Doric column into the neighborhood and fucking tank the property prices around here? I, I, I don't pay $4 a month in rent to look at a Corinthian column out my, outside my window every day. Everyone make a spot hidden roll. Fail. Uh, fa- fa- oh, wait, no, I passed. Pass. Good clutch, good clutch. Pass. Good comms, nice. You failed, Felix? Not my best roll. <laughs> <laughs> He's just warming up. Yeah, wait, just wait. The just three wait. of you staring at Will's neighbor. Uh, only Will can discern in the dim light exactly what the object is. It appears to be the hand and fingers of a small child. Will, make a sanity roll. Uh-oh. <laughs> so it begins. <laughs> Okay. Uh, ooh, fail. Lose 1d3 points of sanity. Oof. We were all depending on you to clutch. <laughs> Ugh, four. Wow. Ouch. Will's neighbor, o- already. Will's neighbor glances around then quickly wraps the hand up. He unlocks the door and disappears into the tightly shuttered house. A moment later, a light appears in a basement window, quickly blunted by hastily drawn shade. Should we go check this out? I mean, honestly, I'm kind of sick of uh, recording our radio show. I mean, we've already done three hours, and I don't think I can do another six. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no way. Like, I mean, just, just do, we can just, like, do some racist skits later. Let's... I don't know what the fuck that guy was doing. Maybe he was just, like, doing the normal thing of leaving your kid in a normal temperature car. <laughs> but it could also be, like, you know, he could be a uh, Zimmerman sleeper agent, so we should investigate. Will, you have a passing familiarity with your neighbor. He's a, a bit local businessman by the name of Ephraim Jeffstein. <laughs> and to you, he's always seemed to be a quiet, inoffensive, and normal man. I, I, mean, I mean, as a professor, I've always noticed that, you know, he took a very intense interest in the sciences of phrenology, uh, being cold, <laughs> and bringing the dead back to life. He is, his only oddity is a touch of absent-mindedness. He lives in a large, well-kept estate across the street from you, and you have a nodding relationship with him. He is one of the more respected and prominent businessmen in the area. Uh, appears to know local politicians, Fred Trump, and people like that. Uh, Steven Pinker, allegedly. You're... <laughs> Uh, He's also a gardener and occasionally comes by and gives you fruits and vegetables that are delightful from his greenhouse. Delicious. Years ago, he would often leave home for long periods of time, traveling out of the country to attend to his business, which is an import-export of some kind. But the last few years have... (laughs) I'll bet seen him spending more and more time at home. He maintains regular hours, working five days a week in his downtown office. During weekends, he usually stays at home quietly, but he regularly goes out in the late afternoon on Sunday, usually returning home before dark. This is one of those trips. Whew. I hope I don't have to catch the uh, 4.30 garbage barge back into Manhattan. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, why, I, why don't I uh, go across the street, uh, knock on his door? You want me to roll with? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I know we're rolling deep. Come yeah, on. yeah, I'm bringing, yeah, I'm bringing yeah. the whole squad. Like that's a big house. You have no idea how many people you could have in there. He could be playing with a full party. We don't know. I mean, if he does, I mean, if he's having a party, maybe we could attend it. That is one kinetic scenario. I would like to ascertain. Let's do it. Okay, sure. You march across the street, uh, head over to Mr. Jeffstein's front door. Uh, everyone, make a listen roll. Fail. (laughs) Fail. All right, where's my listen stat? All right, not a pass yet, but we're warming up. (laughs) We're getting closer. Uh, All's well. 
<laughs> now, Smooth sailing. <laughs> well, I mean, I got to say, I implicitly mistrusted this guy, but he seems to be having, like, an incredibly regular time this evening. I mean, from what I can tell, he was just taking a ventriloquist dummy out of the back of his Model T and bringing it inside probably to entertain his guests with. A very realistic ventriloquist dummy. Yeah, I mean, he's rich. He can afford a good one. A few other notes about Mr. Jeff Steen. Uh, 14 years ago, his father died, and he took control of the family company, Jeff Steen Importers of America. He was once married, but he's presently a widower, lives alone. He's a, a lonely old man, basically. He, he, you knock on the door. Uh, you hear footsteps. About a minute later, he opens. Oh, uh, Professor, how are you? Hello, Mr. Jeffstein. It's your next door neighbor, Doc, uh, Professor Hackenbush. How's it going? Oh, quite well. Is there anything I can do for you? Uh, you know, we were just across the street watching you like we normally do. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we were just doing some people watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know how it is. What? You're watching me. Well, you know, we're you know, we're hanging with my friends here. I got, having, I got, okay, I got, I got yeah. this. All right, all Television right. hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> I feel like gotta we, look out the window. I feel like we got off on the wrong foot. Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, sir, I served in the military, every branch, <laughs> not just this country. I'm just making sure this neighborhood's safe. Like, there's a lot of gang activity here, <laughs> and you're a very prominent businessman, and, uh, yeah, I just wouldn't want them to do the knockout game to you. <laughs> I've noticed a preponderance of Italians in this area. Yeah, yeah, they are pondering their fucking dicks off over here. <laughs> Oh, well, all is well here. Thank you for checking in, Your Honor. Uh, you're welcome, Your Majesty. Oh, <laughs> uh, what are you doing? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Are, are, you up are, are you up to anything? I mean, you want, I mean, you want to hang out? Yeah. I got, I, got, I got some pretty good ether here. I got a full pint bottle. Oh, I, would you and like a some... brand new rag. Yeah, I have a new song. <laughs> would you like some loudenum? I will note that uh, rampant drug use is not a normal socially acceptable thing <laughs> in this era. So he's taken aback by your suggestions and says, oh no, I'm a bit tired and I must go to work tomorrow. Uh, but you, perhaps another time. Could you show us, uh, I mean, you know, just couldn't help but noticing again, um, doing, doing my people watching, doing my radio program, looking out the window, checking out people on the street. Uh, I couldn't help noticing the um, incredibly realistic ventriloquist dummy that you took out of the back of your car. I was wondering if maybe you could like regale us with some, you know, uh, sleight of hand or close, close magic or just... Sleight of mouth, more like. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not a performer. I'm a businessman. <laughs> uh, you still want to hang out? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to fast talk him. All right. So, um, I was uh, actually best friends with General Blackjack Pershing, and he said I was the greatest soldier he ever met, and that I should replace all his sons. And uh, there's this thing called the war bounty in uh, just the military, that if you kill the Kaiser or make him run away, like the little pussy he is. You get to take his the jewels of the German royal family or whatever. Anyway, because Pershing liked me so much, he gave me one of the biggest rubies, and I would like to invest it. And you seem like a guy who getting kind of Hanukkah with it. <laughs> so, you want to get this bread? <laughs> I'm about to have a fucking bonus army. You want to get this unleavened bread? Yeah. What's up, brother? Make a fast talk roll. Uh, what is my fast talk? Uh, yeah, pass. Fuck yeah, I fucking told you. <laughs> yes. He's impressed by what you're saying, but says, uh, that all sounds very good with the uh, rubies and what have you. I tell you what, uh, perhaps next weekend you could come by and I could uh, give you a tour of my greenhouse. Hey, brother, I'll be there with bells on. Let's do it. Very good. Well, uh, have a good night then. Semper Fi, buddy. 
Yeah, he shuts I, the door. I've got the latest Al Jolson record. He shuts the door. It's got Swanee and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and Bang Bang Rider Blues on the B side. You want to listen? He shuts the door. <laughs> uh, now. This guy sucks. <laughs> Well, you're just there harassing him. <laughs> you just, you we, asked him. We're to offering do. him an incredibly good time, and he's just not interested. He's I got, wanted to know if he wanted to fucking get smacked up and listen to Mamie by Al Jolson. <laughs> he doesn't want to get high and show you his child zoo. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to play this strategically. Gentlemen, we might have to become clandestine if we're going to get Okay, I honest. think. All right. No, well, we got to wait till next weekend. Uh, it's simple. Like, I have to steal a huge ruby and say it's mine. <laughs> And then we go to his fucking greenhouse and, like, figure out what kind of shit he's doing. We could get some glass and paint it red. See if I pass love that, that off. idea. I like that as, like, a team-building exercise. Like, one of us can hold the piece of glass. One of us can paint it. The other can direct it. That's a fun idea. I think, though, we should take the, the time in the, uh, in the intervening period um, before our greenhouse store to maybe, I don't know, Go to the, can we go to the library or do any research? You on, can always go to the library. To the book depository. Yeah. Library's free. Yeah, sure. Uh, you what, guys are fucking nerds. What lines of investigation do you want to pursue? How about, uh, let's look into his import-export company, or is there any, can we, can we look into any uh, family history or records or anything like that? Uh, I will say make... Uh, each of you make a library use roll. Hey, I passed. Pass. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, you know what I always say? Some people have read a thousand fucking books, but haven't lived the pages of a single one. And that's the type of guy I am. So I failed. You turn up several stories of interest. Here's the first one. Uh, dated 14 years ago. Local businessman killed in accident. It was learned today that Theodore Jeffstein, owner of Jeffstein Enterprises of America, is dead, victim of a tragic accident, accident while vacationing in the Virgin Islands. Jeffstein, while in the company of his son Ephraim, died in a fall while the two were traveling through the high mountains of the Virgin Islands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it would have been so easy to just make it a fall off a yacht. According to authorities, the two men were on a hiking trip. <laughs> they were set upon by a group of bandits known to frequent the area. <laughs> While being pursued down the mountainside, the elder Jeffstein apparently lost his footing and fell to his death. His son managed to escape, eventually making it to safety. The elder Jeffstein's body has not yet been located, and authorities fear that it may be lost, possibly consumed, by the wild dogs that roam the mountainside of the Virgin Islands. <laughs> Theodore Jeffstein is survived by his wife, Elaine, and one son, Ephraim. At this time, it is not known if Ephraim will take over the management of Jeffstein Enterprises. The other piece. Uh, two articles dated 12 years ago. Obituaries. Jeffstein, Lynn Ann Myers, age 22, died in childbirth in her home. A graduate of the Pierpont School, Mrs. Jeffstein was married to local businessman Ephraim Jeffstein. Two years ago, funeral services for both mother and child will be held Saturday afternoon. Mrs. Jeffstein is survived by her parents, Edward and Shirley Myers, and her husband, Ephraim Jeffstein, president of Jeffstein Enterprises of America. Second article, nurse hospitalized after accident in patient's home. Professional nurse, Miss Mona Dunlap, was admitted to Central Sanitarium yesterday following an accident that took place in a patient's home. Her condition was diagnosed as serious. Miss Dunlap, hired by Mr. and Mrs. Jeffstein to help with Mrs. Jeffstein's confinement, apparently suffered a stroke while attempting to deliver the Jeffstein's baby unassisted. Mr. Jeffstein returned from his office Wednesday afternoon to find Nurse Dunlap unconscious and his wife and infant son dead due to complications of birth. Doctors at the sanitarium say the woman has yet to regain consciousness, and it may be some time before the full extent of her injuries are known. Bro, this guy has endured so much loss and tragedy. We should help him. It's a bit sad, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. People just... They're there, and then they're not. <laughs> Life goes on until it doesn't. You think someone is totally safe 
and just gonna be with you forever. <laughs> then one day you 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 wake up and at two p.m. and you log on Twitter and you find out you log on the Telegram and you find out <laughs> he's dead. All right, what what should we do? Uh, I mean, I'm 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 glad we you know did the research here, but I'm not really I'm not quite sure what to do with this or how it can help us. Well, my suggestion is always break into someone's house. And this seems like a perfect chance to break into someone's house. Do we really need to uh, break I mean, into it when, he, when he's, he's invited us yeah. to come over? Yeah, like in a week. <laughs> we don't know what's going on in there now. Can, can, you can, can be can, creating Frankensteins. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get in there and find out what's going on. It's, Matt, it's the 20s. How hard is it to break into a house? Matt, what, I know they got, I, they got that lap. They got that like little eye hook. That's the most advanced lock technology yeah, that exists. Matt, Matt, there's, there's no, two, there's there's no two factor security. There's no DNA testing or anything. If you get caught for like killing someone, you're just an idiot. You can just like skip town. You could go to like one town that's three miles away and you say, oh, I'm not that guy. I'm a different guy. Yeah. There's no IDs or anything. No one would ever be why, able to know. Yeah, why do we do a radio show? Why don't we just like lie about being lawyers or something? <laughs> So stupid. Dr. Penny Farthing, I know this is your first time in the big city, but I assure you, you cannot just waltz into someone's house like it's a barn. All right, well, what's your idea? Just wait until he invites us over, just hang out for a week? No, I mean, like, we, like, we've done a lot of work today. Like, I lied to that guy. (laughs) Um, You guys read some articles. Already read some articles before that. Uh, let's, you know, do what we do for a week, whatever the thing is we do, just pass out from using ether, and then I'll lie to that guy in his greenhouse, and we're fucking rolling. Maybe in that intervening time, you'll learn how to use a library. I will say... I don't need to. I know how to use the world. I will say that both of your approaches are totally valid for this scenario. If you find yourself at an impasse, you could perhaps both roll your debate convincing skills. You guys are about to get fucked on. Uh, what would that be exactly? Uh, what do you have on there that would be uh, good at using logic to win an argument? <laughs> fast talk. <laughs> yeah, Lying. No, fast, fast talk, talk is no fast talk is, is bullshitting someone to That's get out of That's how you something. win an argument. <laughs> um, uh, I'm persuade. Not- persuade. It would be persuade. Persuade sounds good then. Yeah. Uh, so our wait, our, our the debate here is whether we should uh, just you know hang yeah, whether out. You should, whether, you, whether you should like just uh, yeah, go yeah. in now. Okay, it's between like, hang out. I mean, I I would like to hang out for a week, sitting in front of my fireplace, pouring over leather bound volumes and looking at lithographs of my sister, <laughs> like I always do. I want yeah, I want to like get in shape for this. I want to throw a big heavy ball at another guy in a turtleneck, and he throws it at me. <laughs> I want to get a good pump for this shit. I will say Will and Matt both roll your persuade and compare. No, I, I, I should roll. I have a higher result. persuade than you. Oh, wait, fine. And Felix, roll your idea. persuade. Oh, god damn it. It was so close. Pass, pussy. Fuck. The consensus of the group is that it's more sober to wait. All right, losers. All right, we can we can fast travel this though. You guys are watching me just pick up triangular weights. You're amazed at how strong I am. Fifty pounds, the most a man has ever lifted. <laughs> Holy shit! Your fucking Under Armour turtleneck looks so dope on you. Your I'm just lifting that, overalls are sick. I'm not lifting anything, but I am standing in one of those belt contraptions. <laughs> <laughs> well, it melts the pounds away. I don't even have to do anything. It's amazing, dude. Your cardio is nuts. Dr. Penny Farthing adjusts his Zeppelin tickets uh, to stay another week here in New York City. Let's go see Sherlock Jr. another three times. All right. That, that's so sick in Sherlock Jr. when he's like, yes, dear Watson, I'm thinking that I am back. <laughs> what? <Ugh>. What? <laughs> What's the problem? You don't like that? Fuck you. Uh, in the days that transpire, a uh, march is assembled to says that we will resist Calvin Coolidge, not another <laughs> teapot dome. <laughs> uh, and then it's uh, bright and early on Saturday morning. Uh, you're all crashing at William's uh, uh, place. And uh, Mr. Jeffstein knocks on the door. He's carrying a basket full of fruits and vegetables. He says, oh, are you ready for the tour, gentlemen? 
Absolutely, Mr. Jeff Steen. I've been thinking. I've been waiting for this all week long. Yeah, uh, he hands you the basket. Thank you for these gourds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you do with the basket? Just put it in my living room. Put it in my sort of a conversation piece. You know. Well, it's edible foods. Okay. You know. Um, I'm going. I mean, obviously, I don't have an appetite because I'm, you know, completely dope to the gills. So I'll refrain from eating uh, one of these, you know, almost certainly poisoned or cursed uh, produce. <laughs> sure. You uh, put it down on your table, and he leads you across the street to his, the extensive grounds of his home. Uh, he leads you around the back. Beautiful temple you have here, Mr. Jeffstein. It's a normal house. That's not in the. <laughs> <laughs> looks like. That's, that's, but in the 1920s, that was that's a normal, normal, that's normal what house. That's every house. Like. Yeah. That's every house. Saying, like that. I'm, saying, yeah. I'm saying the vibe is, is different. <laughs> it has a normal house vibe. It's an old man house vibe. Just, just like that picture. <laughs> Can't wait for the chore. Thank you, Mr. Jeffstein. Yeah, I, you know, it's good when neighbors can, you know, be more than neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like they benefit you. They have benefits. <laughs> he leads you to the back of the grounds. There are two things of interest here: a vegetable patch and a greenhouse. Oh man! Wait, you said vegetable, and that that key hit in. That that cord got struck. I don't like thinking about vegetables. I didn't strike the cord, so. <laughs> well, it's just it's given it's given. Uh, there are no more normal house vibes here. No. Uh, vegetable garden and greenhouse. Uh, he takes you to the greenhouse uh, with it, w in there. A very normal greenhouse. <laughs> no it's not a normal greenhouse. What? Oh, these zucchini are out of season. <laughs> it's not zucchini or really any plants that you recognize except uh, orchids. The rest of the plants are exotic from parts unknown. You've never seen anything like it. None of you have any botany skill, right? Anything involving the natural world that would help you identify plants? I mean, you get ten. That's it. Ten is ten is base, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Will, uh, you had uh, biology, I think, or no? Uh, I have biology, but I don't. That's that's the same way. Yeah, same botany. Yeah. I have a phrenology. <laughs> My education is eighty for some reason. You lied. You lied to your own fucking skill sheet. Yeah, that's what learning is. You lie until you know something. Matt, I, I have very high occult stats. Uh, mm, no occult. Matt, roll your biology. Uh, fails. <laughs> I'm a dumbass. <laughs> I'm just a simple country. No, I'm just a simple country. No, I'm just a simple country testicle doctor. <laughs> Uh, we're just wandering around not recognizing anything we're seeing. <laughs> Jeff Seen takes you around the greenhouse. He explains to you, these plants are very delicate. They're sensitive to the slightest change in the environment. It's very hot in there, and it's jungly. It's a jungly greenhouse experience. Oh, this picture, great. A, de a delicate orchid, just like my sister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything you want to do in there? Can I take a, a maybe pocket one of the plants, take a sample? Can I chew on one of them? <laughs> See if I get high or something? Do I have my gun on me? <laughs> oh, no, we're all armed, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is one plant. It has large orange and blue leaves. Very appealing to look at. Can I eat it? And you want to pocket it? I'd like to just, like, you know, take a sample. I would say that doing this would require uh, Mr. J uh, Jeffstein to not be observing you because presumably you would not want that to be the case. So, you Felix? Could, uh, yeah, I'll distract him. I'll start talking about my finances. Colonel's come tree? Yeah. Okay, Yo. you know what to do. Yo. Okay. Oh, oh, okay, so he's like showing you a leaf and says, uh, oh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, isn't this the most gorgeous leaf? I've actually seen better ones, but this one's pretty nice. Um, you know, I um, I really appreciate this tour of your, like, just normal-ass house. Just fucking nothing weird about it. 
the regular greenhouse that everyone likes to have. Uh, but I was wondering if we could talk about, you know, my investment profile, perhaps. Investment. Ruby, yes. I told you about. Oh, business. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thing is, like, I was also trained as a janissary, and janissaries cannot own property in the Ottoman Empire, but it doesn't exist anymore, as you know. Yes. Um, but thanks I have, to you. Thanks to you. Hero. Yeah, Hero. Yeah, and people still fucking spit on us when we come home in the Zeppelin. <laughs> but, um... As, as soon as I got off the Zeppelin at the Empire State Building steeple, <laughs> anarchists, they sp- anarchists spat anarchy. on me. <laughs> <laughs> Admiral, what does this have to do with business? Nothing, nothing. I just get emotional. I think we still have guys over there, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, irregardless, like I <laughs> do have, I do now have like several optionable investment pro- properties in the British Mandate of Palestine. That's where I got this shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also, you know, the aforementioned giant ruby from the Kaiser who ran like a pussy because of me. Felix, make a fast talk roll. Oh, God. What the fuck is happening today? 81 over 70. Shit. Fuck my ass. He says to you, I I don't see any import uh, opportunities there. And as you know, I import goods. What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, those are all other places. Uh, what, what are you, but I point? will say that while Felix is trying this chicanery, uh, Felix and Will attempt to pilfer and chew on uh, <laughs> the plan, or, or Matt and Will. Uh, both of you will have to make a sneak roll due to Felix's failure. Do you have sneak? That's a thing on here, yeah? Nope. Nope. What, nope. Did, did they change sneak to something else? God damn it. Do Sleight it, of shit. hand? No, you roll your dexterity then. Okay. Done. Uh, pass. Pass. Nice work, boys. I can already taste that sweet exotic flower in my mouth. <laughs> Will, uh, you pocket a few of the leaves. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone here familiar with this scenario, just out of curiosity? Uh, Matt, you chew on it. Hell yes. Ooh, ooh, boy. Yeah. You don't even bother using the hands. Uh-uh. Go right in for it. It's waxy. It's bitter tasting. Mm, yes. And it stimulates your pineal gland. Now we're talking. Allowing you to see objects outside of this reality. Hell yes. Uh, That's what I've been trying to do. You're getting ketted out right now, Matt. Yes. You are getting so ketted out. Ass awesome. Man, this shit's like the vibing 20s. Uh, Mr. Jeffstein says, uh, you know, well, we, we got to cool it with the plant zone. Why don't we go outside and stand around the backyard and Absolutely. absolutely. I would o- love to. Outside is one of my favorite places. Let's go. As he takes you outside and shuts the door in the greenhouse, uh, Dr. Penny Farthing, you lose your grip on reality. <laughs> you are no longer in Brooklyn. You are no longer anywhere. Well, you are in a place, so to speak. A dark, rock-strewn landscape, decorated with crystalline growths, occasionally lit by flashes of rose-colored lightning. Oh, shit. (laughs) You are naked. Damn. (laughs) Uh, What? uh, Matt, could could you? you? I mean, you know, for authenticity's sake. (laughs) Matt, what's your power? Uh, 40. Okay. <laughs> uh, what do you want to do here? Uh, I guess I'll just walk around nude on the beach. This is great. The free vacation to the beach. To the nude rock beach. You walk... <laughs> Chris okay. Wade on the theremin, by the way. Let's <laughs> give it up. Okay, you spend 10 minutes wandering around the crystal level. Uh, it's a fairly uneventful. I mean, you're just nude, kind of vibing out and enjoying it all. It's cool. Very... This is exactly what I hope would happen when I ate that plant. You think to yourself, God, I hope a place like Berlin it, it should... is invented at some point. <laughs> 
This reminds me of when uh, you, you ate those other plants at the Calvin Coolidge convention and some teenage supporters of the Kaiser attacked you for liking Art Deco architecture. <laughs> This is like the time uh, you used uh, oriental research chemicals at Ozymandias Fest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something does happen after 10 minutes. You see a scuttling spider-like form advancing across the landscape directly oh, towards you. Oh, that's not good. Seven feet tall, emaciated oh, looking. Fuck. The scuttling thing hungers for human blood. No. Uh, well, there's scuttling. <laughs> Make a sanity roll. Uh, a pass. Lose one sanity. You keep it together, but it's scuttling towards you. What do you want to do? He, he's used to this kind of shit. <laughs> Not uh, yet. So I'm completely nude. I don't have my cane, I'm assuming. Uh, the, just me, my poor pink flesh, and the scuttling spider monster. Uh, I guess I just have to run away. Uh, you also have the option to attempt to will yourself out back into uh, normal boring. Wait a minute, reality. that works? Shit, I never tried that before. <laughs> well, you could try. Yeah, I know you. I know you haven't. Yeah. You've never been one to cut a trip short. No, of course not. That's a waste. But if you make a hard power roll. All right. Power? Yes, but a hard roll, meaning uh, you have to get half your power or lower. I will not. What's your power again? 40. Oh, low. Yep, I passed, but it was not hard. Oh. It was soft, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're attacked by a thing. Ah, fuck. <laughs> uh, what do you want to do, dodge or fight back? I can't, I'm, I'm a new pink 60-year-old limping idiot. I fucking, I might as well dodge. Roll your dodge and tell me the level of success. Uh, I succeeded. Very, very strongly. That was a two. Wait, that's a two? Yeah. Uh, oh, it, crit it fails. Uh, ah, you fuck you. You dodge out of the way of the uh, wretched spider being. Hell yeah. Uh, now it's your turn to act. Uh, run. Continue to run away. I can't fight this thing. It's huge. Turn your back on it? You, no, you should try to keep willing yourself all right, out yeah, of I'll the hell I'll, All right, all right. Yeah, I'll keep doing that. I'll try Roll again. it again. I'll try, I'll try to will myself out of Still it. Still a heart. Nope. <laughs> fuck. Uh, Lieutenant Curly, uh, where did Dr. Penny Farthing go? <laughs> oh, he's. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, for you two, Felix and Will, you see him. He's just kind of standing there smiling. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a great afternoon. I, I love visiting neighbors with my friends. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. Mr. Mr. Jeffstein says, uh, is he all right? Yeah, no, he's fine. He's just feeling himself. You know, in his feelings. Yeah, no, this we've known this guy. I've been saying his words into a microphone when he writes his letters for like a year now. I know this guy. Sometimes your homie's just naked. Like, sometimes he's just not wearing it. Matt, okay. it attacks you again with its awful claws. Dodge. <laughs> All right, I'm going to roll it. Oh, I failed. That's a pass. Oh, boy. Take two damage. Oh. Roll a one on both dice. Oh, brother. What? I rolled a one on both dice. Take two damage. Okay. All right. Next. <laughs> what's your hit? What's your HP at now? I'm at nine now. You're at nine. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, the awful spider thing is like chewing you up. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> and what you two guys see is Dr. Penny Farthing's face become bloody and ripped up. Uh, that incurs a sanity loss for both of you, so make sanity rolls. I suppose I'll make one for Mr. Jeffstein as well. Pass. Pass. Oh, easy pass. Yeah. Both of you lose one sanity. You're not phased by this. Yeah. You knew, you know, he was kind of a weird guy when you met him on the <laughs> Telegraph. Yeah. So this is just kind of something you're like, okay. Uh, it, like, due to uh, the lack of nutrition and, and our diets of just average normal people, I see people's faces start bleeding all the time. Yeah, it's regular. It's, <laughs> yeah, I, like, it happens. No like, big deal. I'm not, I'm not even sure, like, Korea is a place yet, and so we definitely don't have, like, their eel mask technology. <laughs> Skin skincare is in a, the worst state it's ever been. Dr. Penny Farthing, the dimensional being, comes at you again right before it's about to stick you in the chest with its awful claws. You snap out of it. You're back in uh, human zone. Phew. 
Uh, you're bloody and you've still taken the damage. But you're not nude, so that you got that going <laughs> that for you. That's good. Uh, worth it. Anything you want to say to your colleagues who are now mystified that you're bloody? Uh, don't eat the fruit thingy that I just ate. Don't good eat call. any of it. It's bad. It takes you to a bad place. Uh, but no, clearly this guy has got uh, evil forces going on here. He's, yeah. it, it is not a ventriloquist dummy. He is, he's full on evil. Dr. Penny Farley, man, do you want some like orange slices or niacin, man? Like you're, you're here right now, but you got to just ride it through, so you're up here right now. Dr. Uh, Mr. Jeff Steen says, uh, he does a big yawn and goes, oh, what a day. We saw the greenhouse and the vegetable garden. Tour's done. Well, can we, can we see the rest of your house? Can we go inside? I'd, lo I'd love to take a tour. I mean, you know, I, I, I just, I'm a fan of architecture and interior design. My house is it's kind of a mess right now. You know. I mean, have you seen my place? I mean, come on. I have seen your place, yes. I live with, <laughs> I live with three dozen cats. I mean. Yes, I've seen your, I've seen your place. Would you like, want to come hang out there? <laughs> <laughs> I really think I should be getting to bed. It's been a long day. Mm, I think, boys, boys, a long huddle, huddle, day. Huddle. Um, I think, like, look, Matt, uh, Doctor, Doctor Hackenbush, like, he may have like gotten attacked by an interdimensional spider, but his idea of breaking into this guy's house later is sounding better and better. Like, this guy doesn't want to help veterans. He's a fucking asshole. <laughs> I will be, like, writing a bad review of him on Telegraph. <laughs> this asshole probably has, like, the little rascals in Shirley Temple in his fucking basement. We saw him un unloading all of the little rascals out of his car last yes. week. And I, we need to get to the bottom of this. So I think we should That's make... That's what I've been saying! We... Okay. Uh, oh, look, I'm sorry... You had to pay an extra thirty cents to change your Zeppelin ticket back to back to Kansas, Doctor Benny Warthing. Also yeah. got eaten by a fucking spider monster. Okay, well I thought he would believe my lies. <laughs> what the fuck do you want from me? Here's what we do, guys: make a polite exit. Yeah. Wait till he goes to bed. Break into the house. That's what I've been saying. Okay. Okay. Well, he also like goes. Am I? Will I give you credit for it? No. Stop trying. Uh, he also uh, goes to work, and as you know, he tends to leave every Sunday, so those could also be good times. Oh, right. right. I wish every day was like a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, well, what day is it? It's Saturday. Okay. Easy. All right. Well, oh, yeah, let's... let's it's, like... uh, it's Saturday at the late hour of 2 p.m. He's already put his sleeping cap on <laughs> and is trying to get you to go the fuck home. Thank right. you so much for your tour of your extraordinary greenhouse, uh, Mr. Jeff Steen. Yes, uh, I think you'll see it was all very normal. I, it was you know, all please, normal. I would, I, I would love, I would love to host you in my reading room uh, anytime you want. Yeah, let's make it happen. You Thanks know, again for the. We'll thing. talk about when. Yeah. Thanks again for the vegetables. But now I've, I've got to go to bed like an old widower does. Yeah. The only old man who's normal. Can I tuck you in? No, 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 no. Do you want me to, like, carry the candle for you? No, no, no. All right. Oh, I mean, no. you know, don't come crying to me when you burn your shit down, but okay. uh, please enjoy your gifts. Oh, no, for sure. I cannot wait to eat the regular ass shit you brought us. All right. He goes back in the house and he goes to bed. Now what? We, uh, let's, you know, camp out at my place. Look at some lithographs. Do we... So we have, like, that basket of uh, fruit that he gave us. Um, do we know anyone who knows anything about biology at all? Like, do we have any, any like, uh, success flappers who listen to the show? <laughs> Maybe, like, you know, they're scientists somewhere. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone uh, make a spot hidden roll. Fail. Fail. Oh, I rolled the wrong one. I got excited. Uh, <laughs> big success incoming. That is one of the worst ones I've ever rolled. 
Uh, the fruit is normal. It's normal fruit. <laughs> All is well. That's what that role was uh, trying to establish. That it's normal, good fruit to consume. <laughs> and you see nothing unusual about the fruit. I mean, we should probably give it to your cats then. <laughs> you got so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we are. Uh, uh, you know, let's call it a day. Wait for tomorrow. Wait till yeah. he goes to work. Break into this asshole's house. I mean, dude, he didn't even let me tuck him in. Fuck yeah, this guy. He's an I'm breaking into his house. We're going. We're going sicko mode. Uh, that's the plan. You're doing it Sunday. Uh, Sunday. Yeah. Sunday. 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 Break into Jeff Steen's house. 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 Free the little rascals. 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 Great. Let's do that after the intermission. Can we get another? Can we get another six pack on the stage, please? Uh, of beers. Can we, can we hear some old timey Charleston music as we yeah, walk bump off? Bump that shit. Bump yeah. that shit. Ten minutes. Right, boys you're welcome <laughs> you it, also gave him a promotion it's Saturday night and you have a plan now to go investigate the house uh, Sunday evening but before then you've got to record another fucking episode of your fucking show uh, so God damn it we have I mean I know it, it sucks we have a responsibility when you have Literally tens of listeners. Uh, they, you know, there are expectations. So, look, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Didn't really prepare. There's nothing in Collier's magazine this week that's funny enough to <laughs> do. Yeah, I gotta say the flower recipes were pretty good. There's nothing to make fun of there. Yeah, no, honestly, they gave me some good ideas. Like just eating flour out of the bag. Yeah. Okay, so we did just see. Uh, <laughs> We did just see another horse picture, so let's just phone it in and do another uh, cinema episode. Right, right. Man okay. watching a horse eight. Man uh, yeah. Age of Infinity. Age of Cal uh, man age watching of a horse eight. Age of Calamity. So let, All let's. All I want to be is Al Capone. <laughs> All right, man watching hor horses eight. Man watching horse eight. Age of Calamity. Let's go. Let's dance to Charleston on this absolute piece of shit. And I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna start. Off, okay. I I I I gotta speak on this guy. The, the, this corpulent rap scallion who reviews films under the uh, pen name uh, the Cinema Clod. Uh, <laughs> he loves these fucking movies, can't get enough of them, projects all of his own uh, thoroughly uh, shallow and inadequate politics onto the horse movies. He loves the horses, wants to be a horse, and it's just like, I don't, I don't care how much you like these movies, Lillian Gish is not going to fucking write you a fan letter, okay? She's not going to see this, bro. Lillian Gish is not walking through that door, okay? This asshole, he loves the horse movies, but has the fucking, has the temerity this unmitigated gall to look down his nose on real artists like D.W. Griffith and say that their <laughs> movies are, oh, his movies are problematic. That they reflect, uh, oh, the bad views about uh, racial politics in America. Fuck off, dude. By the way, did you notice how fucking fat Teddy Roosevelt has got in these movies? Yeah, he is getting thick. In his earlier films, like the Rough Rider trilogy, uh, <laughs> and this man, I mean, dude, like the guy was cut. He was jacked. And, you know, when he films those action sequences, like, you believe it. But he's gotten so lazy now, he's just sitting in a, like, you know, he's just on a, a SETI, basically, pretending to fight. 
Yeah, you can see the guys with two by fours jostling him. He isn't even moving anymore. Also, I, I don't want to be that guy, but it kind of felt like a pandering that they brought in a female horse. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like they're just trying to go for those, uh, the, you know, the, the, the whole, uh, the, you know, the, the Jane Adams types, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, and you, and you notice, like, also, like, the big thing about the stable hands, like, all Irish, so the liberals that watch this movie can feel good about themselves because they also have Irish stable hands. And it's just, like, more, more just horseshit. No pun intended. But, like, also, like, I'm sorry, the way that the guy's newsboy cap blew off from the hose was completely unrealistic. That is not <laughs> the kinetic tra trajectory it would take. That is fucking bullshit. You know, it redounds to Dr. Penny Farthing's uh, pet theory that we are in an era of extra normalization. I mean, look, the horse washing movies, pure unmitigated liberalism, and it makes me wonder that if, like, at some point in the future there might be some sort of new form of liberalism uh, that we all have to live and suffer under. That would suck. I pray it never happens. But, you know, yeah, oh, oh, they, they added a filly. They added a filly in, in, in Horse Wars 8, and it's just like pandering to the flappers, okay? Totally pandering to the flappers. Yeah, imagine these fucking pigs going up to the bonus army <laughs> of which I was a part of and also helped disperse. <laughs> <laughs> and being like, you know, oh, sorry that you don't have any money, but there's a girl horse now. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> you, got, you got a girl horse. Can, you, got a, yeah, you, there, you have fillies in, in, in cinema now. <laughs> Hope you're happy. Calvin Coolidge is still fucking president. <laughs> uh, you get it out of the way You record the damn episode You spend the rest of the night Looking at lurid daguerreotypes With your fellas uh, you, you know, I love it it's nothing fun. I love it <laughs> My eyes comically bulge out of my head At the end of their stalks I'd like I dip around each other and explode I, I, yeah, I, have, I have an extensive art collection Of uh, women pulling up their uh, like, you know, Floor length dresses To show a bit, bit of ankle yeah. Causing my tongue to roll out of my face all the way down to the end of the road and then roll back into my mouth. It's Sunday. Awooga. I'm trying to get my, my shit songed by a girl in a seashell-shaped hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday, mid-afternoon now, and like clockwork, Mr. Jeff Steen leaves his house in his automobile. Uh, reading from the scenario that I definitely read and prepared before doing this, like any good keeper, eventually the investigator should get to peeking around the house itself. <laughs> Boys, good idea. Boys, you that know, I had literally an hour and a half ago. All right. Okay, well, you know, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't have fucking gone to the spider realm were it not for. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah, that was great. <laughs> All right. Well, I. We learned, like, all types of shit he's planning there. Granted, like, none of us know anything about botany, but, like, if we did, it would have been a really valuable trip. <laughs> uh, I actually... Yeah, no, I... Oh, fuck. Yeah, no botany. I swear to God, there was... This is a... Uh, this was written in 1990, multiple editions of this game before, but there's no edition of this game where any fucking investigator was like, I'm going to put 80 points in botany. <laughs> <laughs> all right, boys, you know the plan? Let's do some cat burglin. When nearing the house... You hear the crash of breaking glass and the rattle of furniture coming from the front basement window. Now what? Let's take a look in the basement window. What do you think, guys? Yeah, let's go down there. You see something vaguely manlike flash into view for a split second before jumping into the shadows. To all Dude, appearances, it seems as though there are burglar is afoot. I... Whatever that was, it was vaguely manlike, and <laughs> I just, I, I, you know, there's, there's some, something going on. W I mean, okay, so, like, the basement's probably being burglarized. That means, you know, ground floor, attic, second floor, open for more burglary. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we try to go in the front door, or should we, what do you think? Should we go and try to go through the basement window, or what, what do you think? Up to you guys. What do you think, guys? I mean, you're the tact you're a tactics guy, right. Felix. All right. So, like, one thing that uh, Blackjack Pershing told me is that every house starts with a basement and ends with an attic. <laughs> so, 
also, one thing he always told his force is, you know, together you are weak, but divided you are strong. <laughs> so, like, you know, I've clearly, like, put in the hours throwing the medicine ball. I think I should climb to the attic, and you guys... There's no attic. What a shitty house. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Uh, Your big choices now are... Uh bust into the basement in order to catch this burglar or whatever you think it is. I think we or should. Or try to jimmy the lock in the front door. All right, well, well, well I think I don't like that this guy ripped us off. Um, I think we should figure out what his game is. Let's go to the basement. Yeah. Let's bust in that basement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basement boys, let's do this. Felix, what's your strength? Really high. Uh, <laughs> 70. Okay, roll it. Tell me the level of success. All right. Better not fucking choke this one. It's been a bad night of You course. need a normal level of success to break it. Easy. 42. Nice. Uh, yeah, you uh, bust the basement window. Uh, three of you can crawl in. All right. You go first. We will follow All right. right behind. All right, I'm crawling in. Basement gang, gang, gang. Gang, gang, gang shit, gang shit. All right, I'm, I'm crawling. You're in, you all crawl in, you're in a laboratory filled with various chemicals stored in jars. Oh, Damn, numerous, I thought this was a root cellar. What's up? Oh, with numerous beakers, retorts, mortars, and pestles and balances. Several dried plant specimens litter the table. On the other side of the room can be found scalpels, cat gut, needles, rib spreaders, clamps, other implements, all stored in a large metal cabinet. Yo, this guy is smart as hell. He is... He has so much science shit. I bet when he watches derogatypes, he, like, does it through a fucking microscope. But the immediate thing that you see is... The only word for it is a thing. A thing made from discarded parts of humans. It consists of a woman's head with two arms sprouting from where there would normally be ears and a single human leg attached to the neck. Uh... <laughs> Make, you, make sanity rolls. All right. Leg much? Ah, fail. Fail. Hard, 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 hard fail. Hard pass. Oh. Hard pass. Felix hard. lose one sanity. The other two lose 1d6 sanity. Hard fail. Okay. Oh, boy. I'm that's six. Losing, I lost six sanity. I'm losing God. four sanity points here. Oh. Matt. Looks like you guys Matt are about to become make... Republicans. <laughs> Matt, make a... Uh, intelligence roll. Where'd my guys go? <laughs> that fails. Oh no. That's good. That means oh yay! I'm too stupid to be scared. Exactly. Uh, I would say if you had passed that and realized the uh, uh, profundity of what you've seen, you would have had a bout of madness and. Uh, because of your mania for women's shoes might have gotten a little heated about. Uh, Thank God I'm too fucking stupid. Uh, instead, you're just like uh, normal scared. Uh, Boo! Now, uh, now what immediately, how do you react to this horrible... Well, maybe maybe it's not horrible. I don't know. I that's, mean, a, that's a subjective I don't want to... I know, I, know, I know normally ladies' gams don't grow out of their head, but... Hey, not hey. bad. What's your immediate response? Like, for like one second response. I go. K -k 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 you would will or spook, Felix. You're the only one who kind of keeps his wits about him. All right, I'm immediately lying to myself and telling me I've seen, telling myself I've seen this before. Uh, <laughs> and it succeeds clearly. I only lost one sanity point. If you can only lose one sanity point for every lie you tell every day, you're fine. Uh, so, all right, I'm gonna try to. Get my get the gang's wits back together because these guys are crackers. Uh, I'm gonna like throw out a cool one-liner, okay? Gentlemen, I believe she's fallen head over heels. <laughs> and I actually I learned how to do that. I learned how to do that when I was the first James Bond in 1917. While you're doing that, the thing goes up the stairs and it's it's <laughs> <laughs> hate to see the it actual leave, but I'll love to watch it go the actual locomotion of it is just uh, a one foot hopping up each stair 
Well, that's just like bad design. And it kicks against the basement door leading to the first floor of the bill, uh, house, uh, but doesn't manage to kick it down. Now what? I'll always open a door for a lady. <laughs> All right, so both of you are like, you know, you're teetering on insane, but do you think we should pursue? I don't really think that thing can like tell us anything. Can it? Do we know if it can talk? We, we don't know, right? So we could talk to it. It's a foot. That. Right, it's a fucking foot. Yeah. Um, a foot cannot tell a thousand tales. So I think we should sort of like let let her do her thing and uh, just poke around here. It kicks the door again and again. We'll see. Get up there. Dumbass. <laughs> Is there anything else we can investigate in the laboratory? Yeah. Read all of these things. The, 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 no, I read it. Shut up. Leave me alone. Okay, on the other side of the room can be found uh, what appears to be a surgical center. Uh, you would know it as a mash unit, Felix. Yes, yes, I would. Let's take a look. Yeah, let's look around. Uh, there is the cabinet, which contains the uh, things that I mentioned earlier. Dr. Caligari? <laughs> <sighs> when you near the cabinet, the faint sound of an electric compressor can be heard. And it might be noticed that the lowest drawer gives off a faint draft of cold air. I think we should open that lowest drawer. I love to feel cool. You open the drawer and discover a host of refrigerated human remains, nerves, tendons, blood vessels, all carefully stored for what seems to be future use. Make a sanity roll. Fail. Fail. Well, it's my first sanity fail. I'm not feeling good. Uh, everyone lose one sanity for just seeing parts of your body, which is honestly something we should all be comfortable with. Another part of the lab are bottles of glucose, saline solutions. The place is slightly confusing as it seems to serve a surgeon, a chemical manufacturer, and a plant breeder. Well, you look at all the, looking at all the equipment, you realize this costs several thousand dollars more than most men could spend on an innocent hobby. Yeah, that's almost a million. Uh, <laughs> is Who there doesn't any? love having an innocent hobby of sewing legs to women's head? Do we, is there anything, are there any books around we could, like, can we roll spot hidden for that? No, it's a spooky lab. <laughs> no. They're operating a, without instruction. It's not a book zone. Also, the foot thing manages to kick down the door and flee to another part of the house. All right. All right I guess well, we got to go upstairs. Yeah, yeah let's we go, gotta upstairs. go upstairs. Yeah. Let's check it out. Okie doke. Uh, look, you go upstairs. First, ground floor. Most of the rooms, it's a normal guy's house. There's kitchen, dining room, pantry, guest room. What is interesting is the front room, which is used by uh, Mr. Jeff Steen as his study. Above his desk is a collection of books standing on a single shelf. The four most interesting books include an Arabic copy of the Quran, a copy is, of. Are there other, are there other kinds? <laughs> It's in there's Arabic. A, it's in Arabic. So yes, there really, are other kinds. Really weird Maltese version. <laughs> now, technically, it's only the Quran if it is in Arabic. There's a book called 20 Experiments in the Occult" by Dr. Arthur Turnley, a well-worn copy of "True Magic" by Theophilus Wen, and a large, crudely fashioned book bound in cobra skin called "The Key and the Gate." Opening it. All the text is in Sanskrit. Mm. But is there it, wait, does does he have a copy of uh, the case for the state that will be Israel by Alan Dershowitz? <laughs> <laughs> no, but there are fourteen leather bound annual journals dating back to uh, fifteen, sixteen years ago, up to the current year and a black loose-leaf binder holding uh, Mr. Jefferson's notes regarding his botanical experiments. Oh read, read the diary. Read his Gotta diary. Read, read his dream journal. Read Press his dream X journal. Press X to read. 
you press X. <laughs> There's a lot of diary information here, so if you could jazz it up and uh, make this not boring, that would be helpful to me. <clears throat> we will make it so. Notable excerpts. Journal 1 is from 14 years ago. Journal 14 is from the present year. Journal 1, September 10th. Another embarrassing memory lapse today. This journal should help me deal with the problem. What so a fucking what a dumbass. <laughs> uh, I don't remember everything that's ever happened in my life. Uh. It's good for Democratic presidential candidates. September 13th. <laughs> 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 September 13th. I've had mother sign the last... Uh, what happened between September 10th and 13th? <laughs> <laughs> I guess he stayed home that day. <laughs> <laughs> September 13th. I've had mother sign the last of legal papers that transfer ownership of Jeff Steen and Porters of America from her to myself. She seems to be doing well in the new nursing home, and I hope they can give her the treatment and attention she needs. I'm afraid her condition continues to decline rapidly. The death of father seems to have unhinged her mind. If she knew my role in his death, although I don't in the least feel responsible, I'm sure it would kill her. She would never understand the power of my new lord, Ramasekva. Oh boy. Could she have but experienced those moments on the mountain in for the Virgin Islands when he appeared in all of his terrible magnificence? He spoke with me and left his mark upon my breast. Then he took hold of the father, and the two became one with each other. Before devouring him, Ramasekva tore my father's head from his shoulders. That's this guy's God. We made him and his father come together in some sort of town situation. <laughs> Uh, in a metaphoric situation. Oh, God. But his father uh, was killed in this process. Ooh. But if you mean it's kind of like being gay with your dad. Yes. That, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that was yeah. what I was implying. October 29th. I've met a charming young woman at a social gathering. Her name is Lynn Myers. I have arranged to take her to the pictures next week. My lord, I think, would approve of her. December 12th. Spent 30 hours in ceremony. Have located Ramasekva. He wants a bridge to the world and needs my help. I've agreed. My studies have shown that Ramasekva is an obscure Asura, a Virgin Islands demon. The Asura are said to be older gods, the ones who ruled before the coming of Shiva. Certain things spoken of in Wen's book lead me to believe there may be a link to a being called Yog Sathoth. Oh boy. That guy's bad news. From Journal 2, January 10th, I found myself wanting to make Lynn my wife and have sealed the thought by proposing to her. She accepted, and we have set the date of marriage to March 9th of this year. Ramasekva assures me the time is right. March 13th, have returned from our honeymoon. Lynn and I have decided to keep the family place, as it is excellent for raising children. In May, all being well, Lynn will accompany me on my trip to Ceylon for a new herbal tea supply, Herbalife. <laughs> this may be... My last trip out of the country for a while. A man who plans a family must be willing to settle down a bit. April 1st. Had to send Lynn to visit her mother while I cast the ceremony. I don't believe she's ready to understand yet. Ramasekva has told me he wants a union of flesh. He demands the union be made with my wife. I am to await 13 days, cast another easier ceremony, and then wait. Ramasekva is to take my place. This dude's a cuck. <laughs> Mixed religion marriages are always hard. April 14th, cast a ceremony in the morning and Ramasekva came. I waited in the basement while he visited Lynn for several hours. Oh, snap. Oh, she my seems God, to suspect dude. nothing. Oh, my God. Oldergodded.com. <laughs> <laughs> July 19th, I've told my wife to remain in bed throughout the day as she has taken ill from her pregnancy. I took the day to contact Ramasekva. I am to deliver the child myself at home. My master has directed me to raise the child as if it were my own. November 21st. Horror of horrors, my life is in ashes. Poor Lynn went into labor today, and in the course of giving birth to the child, she expired, despite all I did to save her. Nurse Dunlap blundered into the room at the wrong moment. When she saw the child took leave of her senses, in trying to take care of her, I may have neglected Lynn at a critical moment. At any rate, she's gone, and I blame only myself. A second child, a boy, who was born dead, and I have turned both bodies over to the funeral home. The child of Ramasekva I've hidden in the basement. The thing is limbless and appears to have trouble breathing. I don't think it can live for long. Continues, November 25th, the funeral of Lynn and 
the child was that one's boring. November 26, <laughs> the ceremony of Ramasekva brought him forth to explain the child. He said the thing would live, and that I am to spend the next ten years preparing for a time when it would need me. When the time comes, I am to equip it for life on earth. It will be given limbs and lungs. I am not to contact Ramasekva until ten years and a day have elapsed. Is this guy Catholic or something? What's going on? I don't get these, this strange religion that uh, he's a member of. December 14th, I found someone to help me. Uh, actually, that part's uh, pointless now. Uh, journals 3 through 12, nothing important is included here. They cover three trips to the Caribbean, acquisitions of unusual orchids, and other botanical curiosities, meeting of several old friends, work matters, various accounts of mundane purchases, and such. Journal 13, we're in the home stretch. November 25th, the child grows large and the time has come. Large child. Enter the ceremony with Ramasekva. He told me that when spring has arrived, I am to search out fresh limbs and organs to be added to the creature. The time of experimenting is over. As the thing is still a child, I will use only the limbs and organs of children. My experiments show that the more youthful parts adapt better than the older ones. Any parts that are unusual, I am directed to feed to the child. Ramasekva wants it to develop a taste for such things and says that it is now the time for growing. Journal 14, the last journal. Maxwell says I'm spending too much, I'm asking too much of, oh wait, that's a thing, another thing. I must admit to feeling guilt, aiding and abetting his false beliefs somehow, uh, no, sorry, no, skip that, skip that, cut, uh, cut that, make sure the audience doesn't hear that. <laughs> Most of the child's organs are now in place and a few limbs have been attached. The grass heal nicely. My years of experimenting are paying off. March 28th, April 8th, April 11th, April 19th, Mar May 14th, May 25th. These dates contain similar statements to those above. The increasing growth rate of the child thing, necessitating increasingly frequent trips to the garbage dump, is a source of surprise and pleasure for Jeff Steen. Wow. Fatherhood. Final trip. This is another one of those Zeppelin barons I've read a lot about. <laughs> there is one final entry, though. I am being followed by my nasty neighbor. If I what? Cannot, if I cannot, you, my uh, uh, nasty, wretched, layabout neighbor who will never make Very of Very nasty himself, neighbor. Who will absolutely never make $30 a month by selling a radio show through the back pages of Collier's Weekly. If I cannot find a way to deal with him myself, in the next ceremony with Ramasekva, I will be forced to ask for their destruction. Fuck. This looks like we got here just in fucking, time. This asshole thinks that I'm not going to be as big as Amos and Andy. He's got another thing coming. Okay. Yeah. No. We like his like foot child. We're gonna kick the shit out of it. We're gonna blow up. We're gonna buy Collier's one day. We are gonna like we're gonna make Jack Benny look like a loser after he gets famous. Uh, <laughs> fuck this guy. <laughs> Uh, there's also botanical notes. Must we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there. No, it's like a simpler thing. Or something. Okay, yeah, let's, let's okay, read, yeah, yeah, read yeah. it. Well, you need a botany roll to understand. Oh. Oh, we don't. I don't know. No one has any this botany isn't skills. This even on the it's goddamn on the form. There's no botany on here. <laughs> so That's the keeper. Not a category. The keeper is to be blamed because the investigators did not have the foresight to roll a botanist. Let's just. It's not Let's, on here. Let's just do some Margaret Sanger shit to this foot child. <laughs> Call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> the foot child is uh, uh, kicking around <laughs> <laughs> upstairs. Let's go kill this fucking thing. Let's just kill it. If we kill it, then it's, everything's fine. You know what? That is how you solve most problems. <laughs> Just want to be clear, you paid attention to what I just said, right? Yeah. What, 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 no, what the, the journal entries, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I tried to, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. That's that's all I asked. It's the child of an elder It's Ramasekva. And it's gonna. It's an all-consuming creature, and we need to destroy it. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Oh. Okie dokie. Oh, boy. Okay, okay. I think we're fucking up. You head up to the second floor, uh, master bedroom. This is uh, Jeff Scene's room. It's relatively well kept. Relatively well kept closet. Only a third full of clothing because you know his, his wife's dead. So yeah. Uh, 
framed photograph of his late wife has a prominent place on top of nightstand next to his bed. There's nothing in particular important Any here. framed photos of him with uh, former President Theodore Roosevelt? <laughs> <laughs> there are a few photos of him with uh, uh, Taft, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, nothing else of particular importance here, except for the foot thing. <laughs> it's in a corner, uh, kicking, and Pierce scared. Can we try to communicate with it in some way? I mean, I, I feel bad. Maybe it's, maybe if it's shown love, it could become good. Tell me what you're doing. What do you think, guys? I mean, the thing is, like, you can always try to talk to somebody, and then you, like, reserve the option to kill them later. <laughs> That's oh. what I do with you guys. Oh, oh, quick, quick question, Keeper. Can I try to feed the foot child the plant, the psychedelic plant leaves that I've purloined from earlier in the greenhouse. Now you're using your doodle. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, fine, but you feed it like uh, you're feeding a goat at a petting zoo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So it's leaning out, yeah, have some, have some. The thing has an intelligence of zero, so <laughs> I don't think it's in this plane or any other plane. What the, what's that about planes again? <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> I, I, I will say it, it doesn't go for the bait. Instead, it uh, kicks around and appears agitated by being cornered by the three of you. Okay, I got a Derringer, you got a gun, Matt's got a sword. Let's just each draw our weapons and just tee off on this thing. Wait, 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 wait. I mean... Is there a way we could, like, stuff like stuff the flower down its gullet? Like, I mean, you know, I've got a feeling there might be something there, kind of. Like, can we force feed the flower? You know, it's an enhanced interrogation technique that we use overseas. Lieutenant, what's your end goal with this abomination? I don't know. I mean, like, you know, I always say, like, a stranger is always a friend you haven't met yet. But I also say a stranger can also be your worst enemy that could murder you. So... Um, I can't lie to this thing because it's an intelligence of zero. So, <laughs> aren't you, know. you a war hero? <laughs> what? Aren't you a war hero? Absolutely. A master of every weapon that ever existed. Yeah, and some of the ones that haven't come out yet. If you want to destroy it, you can destroy it. Let's do it. Fine, fuck it. I tried peace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to call for rolls. The three of you having cornered the thing and aiming weapons at it, weapons it does not understand, managed to blow it Don't up. Fuck. Hell yeah. Get fucked. <laughs> what a bot. We're cracked. <laughs> this game's easy as hell. I'm fucking goaded today. You destroy the uh, scampering foot thing. All is silent, but you hear faintly something almost like a whale noise, like a, a plaintive wail that's not entirely human, coming from the basement. Oh my god, we have to go back down there. Let's just, yeah, let's, can we just, the... just go back to my house, dude? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we always <laughs> say shit like that, but like, what happens if that whale just like rolls over on your house and kills all your cats? <laughs> Oh, what? wait, wait. Oh, my cats are in danger? Yes. T basement, basement, yeah, basement. Yeah, 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 I thought so. But, but uh, say something else while I look for the page. <laughs> wow, I sure can't wait for the election of 1928. <laughs> I wonder if there will be a Great Depression that happens around <laughs> them. Probably not, though. Like, the stock market, the economy with concerns to, like, profit and supply and demand is at an all-time high. And yep. I can't see. I just think yeah. we got to repeal prohibition so we can just finally, we need we need better entertainment. I, dude, I fucking hate it when you call the bootlegger to come over and get drunk and he doesn't leave and he makes you listen. <laughs> <laughs> makes you listen to his fucking, his own minstrel shows that he's making with his friends. <laughs> fucking terrible, dude. I hate it. It's... I hate, when the, I hate when the bootlegger makes you cross the state line into Massachusetts and then won't even sell you <laughs> beer after 10 o'clock. <laughs> okay, denouement time. 
you head back to the basement. Again, a spooky weirdo's freelance surgery. Uh, there's a closet on the south end of the lab that you open. It's empty, but you notice a fetid, unidentifiable smell that pervades the closed space. And you hear a plaintive, almost it's like a child, or actually, Professor, it's like a, a cat's noise when it begs for food. <laughs> but it's not a meow. Now what? I gotta, gi- I gotta give that kitty a head scratch. One of these? One of these, maybe? Following the sound and the smell, you see that the back wall is a false panel. Ooh. It's one of those new things. Yeah, I heard about that. I read about that in uh, Architectural Weekly. Yo, if we keep grinding, we can get shit like that. <laughs> what do you do to the panel? I had to grind for this false panel. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to the panel? Open it! You open the panel, and you hear a faint, plaintive gurgling from the other side. Lies are, there, are there any other adjectives we can use? I'm reading the damn <laughs> I didn't write the damn thing. You open the panel, light is produced into a back hidden room. And stumbling out of it, it's a true horror. Shirley Temple. It's a creature. The creature's body looks like a huge, dense mucus with the consistency of an overcooked pudding. An interior skeleton can be seen poking through the body from time to time with three great vents closed by wrinkly lips rhythmically aspirate the monster with puffing, wheezing sounds. Oh my god, it's the cinema clod. Ten human legs, all children's, through though of various colors and sizes, rim the lower part of the body, providing it with locomotion, while the 15 chubby little arms encircling the upper side of the body writhe about grasping at nothing. The thing is quite featureless except for a wet circular mouth located on the creature's underside that gurgles and coos softly in a way that resembles the sound sounds a human baby makes. The creature frequently stops to squat and scour the floor with wet suckling noises searching for food. The thing's waste products are passed out of its digestive system by a sphincter opening up atop the center of the monster's body, much like a sea urchin. A near continuous stream of doo doo issues from the hole. Uh, there's a picture here if you want to give a, the audience a description. Picture is really good. Oh man, that's like a million goatsies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that is not a good thing to see. Wonderfully drawn though. I'm not gonna lie, guys. That's pretty weird. That's like one of the weirder things I've ever seen. But still, gotta be honest, wood. (laughs) Everyone make a sanity roll. Oh, I failed that shit. Pass. I mean, how the fuck would I pass looking at that? You're into weird things. Oh my god, oh no. Fuck, fail. Felix and Matt lose 1d10 sanity. Let All me right. know how much it is. It's a 10 one. Oh, yeah. Zero. Yeah, zero for me, too. That's 10. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> Both, of <you> <laughs> Damn it. Oh. Both of you make a... Uh, uh, what the hell was it? Uh, I think an intelligence roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make an intelligence roll. Pray for stupidity. Oh, fuck. I passed. Felix? Oh, fuck it, Pat. Oh, boy. You are both cognizant of the monstrosity. Now you realize the thing from the diaries that you paid very close attention to me saying about this thing being the key to the opening of the gate. Uh, you're both temporarily insane. Uh, uh, give me D10 rolls. It's 10. <laughs> Three. Ten, uh, Doctor Penny Farthing, you gain a new mania. That one's not fun. Well, maybe you're into the doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> it's this thing is shitting and farting out its doo doo ass, and you're really here for it. You gain a mania for doo doo, and you want to consume its doo doo. You. 
There's, the, it's spilling the doo-doo, and I'm out here sipping it. <laughs> Lieutenant Cumtree, uh, you rolled three? Yes. Violence. Red mist descends on you. You explode in a spree of uncontrolled violence and destruction directed at your surroundings. Oh, my God. Fucking dude. If they... If they <laughs> If I could just get drunk and pissed, I would win the fucking boxing Olympics. Dude, I'm the type of guy, when I'm pissed, I get quiet and I can knock anybody out in one punch. I'm so fucking mad, dude. Put on fuck it, dude, put on that jazz shit. I'm so fucking pissed right now. Yo, if there, were, if there was wrestling and grappling involved, I would fucking destroy Jack oh Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Dude, if I could just bring a gun in there, I would fucking kill him. No cap. I rule that Felix immediately sets at the uh, child thing. All right. And that uh, Matt uh, also goes towards it to get some of that doo-doo. <laughs> uh, Felix, if you go insane immediately, what would your weapon be? Uh, probably the pistol. Okay. You, pull, you take out your pistol and you shoot the thing at point-blank range. That gives you a bonus die. Roll it. All right. And it, it, that's D100, right? Uh, yeah, that's a D100, and then roll the tens place twice. Right, right, right. Take the lowest of the two. All right, I got a 10. Nine. Two. I don't know what you did. <laughs> what? 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 Oh, wrong dice. Fuck. All right, D100 is... Fuck, I gotta roll that again. We haven't done combat in forever. What do you want? Okay, what'd you roll? Oh, uh, 60. Out of... Out of 100. It's the 100 place, right? <laughs> Look, it's not my fault this is a talking intensive thing, and I was mostly focusing on the fast talk ability. I believe you have an 80 handgun, so yeah, 80. Uh, you fire and you shoot the damn thing. Yeah. Uh, roll damage. Damage is what you listed at the bottom of your character sheet. Oh, uh, 1d10. 1d plus 1d10, yeah. Roll it. What's the damage? Eight. Nice. Uh, you shoot the thing. Black eye force uh, spews out of the bullet boom. Uh, Matt's excited about that. Yeah, I can't wait. There you go, buddy. I just grub hub you some doo doo. <laughs> Even though one of you is explicitly, only one of you is explicitly hostile, I guess I'll call this a combat situation and say, bullet time, will you act first? What do you want to do? You observe your compatriots going mad, one of them shooting this thing, and the other one uh, uh, licking his lips like an old cartoon, uh, maybe putting on a, 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 a napkin in his... If my homies are going insane, I'm following them into the mouth of madness. I'm taking out my pistol and also firing directly into the doo-doo zone. Roll a normal shot. Okay. Uh, what, what is that? Uh, just uh, roll against your handgun. Okay. All right, that's a pass. Roll damage. Uh, 1d6. Six. Ooh. Good shot. That's why I say, man, nice shot. Felix, you can you can roll another shot without the bonus die. All right, just roll a d hundred. Pass. Roll damage. Four. You shoot the thing again, and uh, what more doo doo? Uh, we, hell yes! If we keep shooting, it's gonna run out of doo doo. <laughs> I don't care how otherworldly this thing is. You can only shit for so long. According to the rules of this edition, the child thing can make up to three fist attacks per round on three separate targets. I'll say it tries to uh, slap all of you in a yuck yuck type style. <laughs> on Will, it's a fail. On Felix, it's a pass. Fuck. On Matt, it's a fail. Felix, they... <laughs> uh, Felix, take nine damage. <laughs> oh my god. Fuck. I am one shot as fuck right now. I need you guys to clutch this. This is. This is I'm really pissed. I'm really pissed. I'm one hit. I uh, just like shot this thing, resulting in doo doo. This is just. Don't worry, guys. I got this. 
Felix, this, this, <laughs> this is even worse than the battles of Verdun, the Sum, and Gallipoli, which I was you were all in. Yeah. <laughs> mad. Uh, Dr. Penny Farthing, it's on you, and you are mad, and you want to... I want that doo-doo. Roll for doo-doo. So you go up and embrace the creature. Yes! It's, it's cloacal hold. Oh, baby. I want to get up in those crevices. There's actually nothing written in the scenario for this particular situation. Wait, you, wait, you wait, what? You surprised me. I'm through the looking glass. <laughs> As to what might happen, what uh, effects on your body eating this creature's waste would produce. I mean, you tell me, man. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just a simple country testicle farmer. I'll say roll your dexterity to see if you can even do it. Uh, pass. <laughs> <laughs> you embrace the creature, which is fighting and pummeling with its child arms. Your friend and co-host, Felix... Uh, and you, it's just like, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching him eat this creature's shit. And because of my phrenological skills, I was like, I always knew this motherfucker was German. <laughs> I'll say it's the top of another combat round. Uh, Will and Felix both have guns aimed at point blank range. Uh, you can fire a shot at the top of the round, but you won't get a bonus die. Let's lick, lick a shot. All right, roll it. Uh, Felix, uh, Will first, and then Felix. Fail. Felix? Oh, hard pass. Roll damage. It's 1d10. 1d10. That's, that's, that's oh. a 1d6. All right, whatever. This is similar numbers. <laughs> All right, I got a 9. All right. Doing a lot of damage to it. Yeah, it's spewing you. a lot of i -Core. Yeah! You both can make m uh, more shots on your regular combat round, so we'll yeah, go sure. first. Pass. Roll damage. Two. Felix? Pass. Roll damage. Uh, eight. The thing is nearly totally incapacitated. It is a baby after all. Yeah, a fucking dumb one. I'll say that it tries to flee, and it tries to flee through William, who's standing between it and the staircase. Uh, Lewis is gonna try to fucking knock you down and flee past you. What do you do, dodge, fight back? I am the thin blue line. <laughs> that separates our civilization from total madness and insanity and baby monsters. I'll allow you to right. either dodge, fight back physically, or just make a shot. I want to. I'll. I'm gonna fight back. Okay, roll it. Roll, uh, your roll against brawl. what? Fighting brawl. My fighting brawl is basically the same stat as the gun. So can I? change that and try to shoot it again? No. Just okay. roll the right, right. Now you're, just roll the damn fighting brawl. Uh, fail. Uh, it gets a hard uh, extreme success. Uh, it uses its baby child arms to push you aside and scurry to the staircase leading up to the ground uh, uh, leading up to the first floor but it's very very weak from you guys shooting it and you eating its waist. Matt, since you're still insane, uh, you hurry after it. Holding a fork and knife in front of him in a comical fashion. <laughs> He's floating on a scent wave. <laughs> but at the top of the round, I'll say that Felix and Will both can still aim and shoot. All right. Will, you want to let fire. Fire at Will. One shot. Fail. Felix. Fucking pass, baby. That's good. That one hit point. You shoot it, it explodes in a, a fucking disgusting. Uh, it's it, it's. I've explained, I've explained this enough. It's gross. It's, it's like the, it's no, like, keep going, keep yeah, going. I'm almost yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm saying there's the I-Core in its veins. Oh, yeah. And there's the doo-doo. And yes. there's, there's baby arms just splattering all across. Oh, hell yes. Phase the fuck up. Boys. It is supper time, folks. Ring the damn dinner bell. Because daddy's going to eat. Chris, can we get uh, normal uh, music? Matt, you're really sad in first. No! You lost the source of the dude. No! But you're all kind of coming out of it, Felix, out of your violent rampage, and Matt, out of your uh, eating disorder. <laughs> Uh, it is then that you hear the front door open, and you hear the see the basement door open, and it's Mr. Jeffstein. He looks down and sees the corpse of his son. He, oh no! I'll definitely have to kill myself now. He, <laughs> <laughs> he falls to his knees and says, what have you done? He was the way. No, nah, doo-doo's off the menu tonight. <laughs> uh, we should murder him, though, seriously. Yeah, we should definitely I mean, him. he's killed how many children to build this thing? Let, let's make it look like he killed himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll start stripping bed sheets into long, thin strips and then tying them together. Well, he's just crying there because you've destroyed his entire life's work and he's lost the last shreds of his sanity. It's fantastic. He's like, so easy to kill right yeah, now. Yeah, no, yeah, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. I should be like, want to come back to my place and look at some listen grass? <laughs> want to just like, listen, I, I told you I got the new Al Jolson record. It's got Mammy and Swanee on it. No reason to live. <laughs> my son. He All right. killed my son. I mean... Everyone I've ever known is dead. Sucks for you, dude. Well, okay. That was some, you, there's that was so some much, weird shit you were doing, man. Yeah, there's so much other shit you could have been doing. You could have, like, built ships in a bottle. You could have read books. You, you did this shit. And now we have to make it look like you killed yourself. So I hope you're happy. <laughs> Do you think I'm happy? I lost 10 sanity points today because of the fucking weird shit you're doing over here. I'm never going to recover. No one's ever going to write a song for veterans. He's weak and fully insane now. Uh, what do you want to do? I'm not kidding. We should kill him. Yeah, let's kill him. Okay, let's kill him. Yeah. Really? He's a murderer! Yeah, he's, a deep, dude. Yeah, he's like, he's killed like dozens of children. Yeah, and he No, never... he didn't kill any children. Were you not paying attention Where to the journey? Where did he get all what the, the fuck were all those from? limbs from? Just for children who died. Children well, okay. die all the time. Okay. Uh, well, you went to the it... child depot? Yes. Is the is the dungeon master Alan Dershowitz? <laughs> he didn't have to kill any children. Like every child dies in this era. Ninety five percent of children die in this era. He All right. kept his underwear on every time he was stitching well, I mean, a child together. <laughs> <laughs> he was just taking the limbs from children who died of other causes. Well, which okay. is every cause in this era. Well, okay, we can't get anything from him. I mean, if he's fully insane, that means he probably can't do yeah. another. I mean, he's not going to be able to, you know, go on to 1920s Match.com and find another uh, spouse to get impregnated by this elder one. So well, he's I'll not really a danger, I guess. I, I mean, mean, I'll just be like, uh, I, dude, I, I know you're, I know you're totally insane right now, but have you considered subscribing for a nickel a month <laughs> to Capone Speakeasy, uh, our, the popular radio program? All I want to be is Al Capone. Buy the monograph. <laughs> uh, what do you want to do? Uh, put him out of his misery, or just? I'll just be like, no, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm okay. Like, if you guys want to kill him and make it look like he killed himself, that's fine with me. But I'm just gonna say, thanks for having us over, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah cool cool defenseless. laboratory, dude. He's utterly defenseless, so just tell me what you want to do. Well, let's just, okay, let's just kill him. Yeah, just, yeah. End this. End it. No point in him li living. You kill him, he's dead <laughs> yeah. now. Put oh, a yeah. bullet in his head, point blank range. Uh, no, can we, like, you know... <laughs> 
You all right, make all right. it look like a suicide. Yeah. yeah all right. No. All right. Classic. The way it was meant to be. You Classic. write. You write on his personal notepad. I've decided to put a bullet in my head. <laughs> I decided, I decided, to, lie, to, I decided to lie down on a bullet, <laughs> and you should not ask any more questions about what has transpired here at my house. I've decided yeah. to fire a shot directly into the back of my skull. No, this is, this is to any cop, this is going to look like classic suicide. Three shots to the stomach, two shots to the head. <laughs> Next to a giant ball of ectoplasm. Yeah. And child's limbs. Yeah. A uh, cane beating. Suicide shit. So, back to Will's house? Yeah. So yeah, order, yeah. order food and really uh, yeah, let's, let's, look yeah. at some more comic books? Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll yeah, look at yeah. some comic books. We'll get fucked up on Ether and Delouded. Pet my cat. All right. I will say any sanity losses that you sustained over the course of this scenario are... Uh, taken care of by the sanity gain for uh, preventing the opening of the fucking gate. Also, Fuck yes, also I got that ketamine spray. Also, and, and killing a totally defenseless old man. And you still have the leaves. Hell yeah, you guys want to get fucked up? Yes. Let's do it! Uh, yeah, let's get cross Let's go baby. to the fucking... Uh, the <laughs> let's go to the other place. <laughs> well done. We did it, guys. Woo! We did it! This shit's easy! Bang! Game is easy. Claps. I gotta say, I have to say. GGs only. I, GGs I, have, I have. We've done this a number of times now, and I've done games where I had to do physical combat, and games where I had to eat monster shit, and it's much more chill and fun to just eat the monster shit. And that was canonically our first encounter with the Mythos. A few right. weeks well, later, you decide that uh, we're going to hire more people for our radio program, and we're going to get rid of the awful uh, James St. Brendan. Who's <laughs> 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 just not cutting it. You replace him with the Portuguese man. Who <laughs> <laughs> you purchased? Oh, oh, no. I I can't believe that I have to work for you right now. <laughs> uh, Gretchio, uh, you better start fucking believing ba it. Bowel movements, I need to track all the time to do my job. And the rest is history. Woo! <laughs>